and Andrew Cuomo, who actually made this into a law, an unenforceable law, but a law nonetheless, that you can only have certain amounts of people and you shouldn't be having multi-generational dinners, that you shouldn't be having dinner with grandma, who is also having his own mother, who is 89 years old, come to a big family gathering with presumably about 10 people or more, based on the way he described it in a radio interview. And so they're just such a bunch of hypocrites. They're just like the Burgermeister. He's playing with a yo-yo. It's okay for him to do it until he realizes, wait a second, I'm breaking my own rule here. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Now you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. Welcome back, everybody, and thank you so much for being with us here on Tactics and our Daily Dose of Stupid today. We have a special treat for you because, frankly, there was just a lot of stupid. And we, I know we've been gone for a couple days, but there's been a lot of stupid, and a lot of it is going to center around the Cuomo brothers. But before we get to that, I got to share this with you. There were just a couple of stupid memes that I, I wanted to share because they do illustrate some of the stupidity going around Thanksgiving. Since it is, of course, Thanksgiving, we are doing a Thanksgiving-themed daily dose of stupid. And so this was one of the funnier ones that I saw. You can see this graphic right here. And this is guidelines from the CDC, you can see here. And my favorite thing about this, avoid singing and shouting. Okay, well, that one, you know, you could see that. That is a spreading of, of droplets, which they believe is the way that the coronavirus spreads. So it may be a little annoying, but avoiding singing and shouting, that one actually does kind of make sense. But I love the next two. Keep music levels down and limit alcohol. Uh... Keep music levels down and limit alcohol intake. Now, I'm not a fan of alcohol, to be perfectly honest. I've never had alcohol in my life. I, if, if people ask me what my stance is on it, I don't think that it's necessarily sinful. I, I do think that it's dumb. I, I think that. I think it's dumb to take alcohol. But spreading the virus? You know, it's interesting because this virus is incredibly woke. Because it, it will affect people that are protesting their business being closed down and their family going into poverty. The virus will not affect somebody that's protesting a woke cause like Black Lives Matter. But we've also found out that this virus is incredibly prudish, which is odd. Because you will not be protected in the uh, coronavirus if you're engaged in intercourse with someone unless you're wearing a mask. If you're wearing a mask, then you're perfectly okay. We learned that. What kind of sense that makes, I have no idea. But now we're learning that when it comes to this particular virus, that it will also... <laughs> uh, it doesn't like alcohol? Well, I mean, wouldn't alcohol hurt the virus? I mean, isn't that what's in the hand sanitizer that we're using? I'm not saying that drinking alcohol makes you immune or something. That's not what I'm suggesting at all. What I am saying, though, is if there's anything that you would think that you could ingest that would help prevent the coronavirus, I mean, maybe besides vitamin D and vitamin, uh, uh, vitamin C, you would think that would be alcohol. And I'm not even a fan of ingesting alcohol myself. I don't do it. But wouldn't that stand to reason? How is it? They're telling us. This is the thing that just astounds me about this. They are telling us that we are the idiots, we're the science deniers, and we need to just shut up and listen to everything that the CDC tells us. And they're the people that are saying that loud music and alcohol intake, that's what's going to result in the spreading of the virus, that the precautions we should take to protect ourselves from this virus is keep the music levels down and don't drink any booze. Okay, CDC. Although, I will say, it is a proven scientific fact that hip-hop and Corona beer 
do indeed spread the coronavirus. That is, that's just science. And if you disagree with me, then you're a science denier and a terrible person and a Nazi that probably kicks puppies. That's what I've learned from the left, is that that's how to win all of the arguments, is to just yell that they're a science denier, even if the thing that you're talking about is not scientific in the least. But it is a proven fact that hip-hop and coronavirus, or corona beer, they do indeed spread the coronavirus. Maybe that's why minorities have had such a rough time with it, is because it's spread through hip-hop and corona beer which means that you should avoid these things at all costs. In fact, no one should ever play hip-hop ever again anywhere in the country. <laughs> Obviously, I'm being facetious here, but there was another one that I saw and I thought was really good, and it perfectly illustrated the problem with a lot of the politicians and the way that they're reacting to this Thanksgiving. I'm sure that you've all heard about the restrictions and that you can't have more than, what is it, in New York, 10 people? You can't have more than 10 people over to your house. So this was <laughs> one that put out and if you're a <laughs> if you're a, a fan of classic Christmas movies, you'll recognize it. There will be no large gatherings, no Thanksgiving, no Christmas, and no New Year's by the order of Burgermeister Meister Burger. It just doesn't get any better than that. That is such a perfect illustration of everything that is wrong with these politicians that have been putting forth these edicts. Because you may recall that Burgermeister Meisterburger, he just hated toys. And because he hated toys, he didn't want anybody else to have toys. And he's just an old, miserable man that wanted to spread his misery to everybody, and he had the power to do it. Doesn't that pretty closely and accurately give away, you know, that, that's a pretty apt description of what's going on with governors like Cuomo and Newsom and Whitmer, it seems like Democrats just hate joy and want to make sure that nobody else is enjoying themselves. And they do this despite there not really being any hard scientific evidence that it would be a problem, but even if there were, and I'm not saying that there's no evidence that, you know, being in a large group of people eating would cause this, because, you know, that certainly could. But what I'm saying here is, there's no reason to believe that these are super spreaders or that each individual person is acting so recklessly that it could cause this problem or that they are incapable of making this determination for themselves. But the other thing that's really funny about this analogy, because obviously the one big difference is the Democrats believe they're really doing this for your benefit. Burgermeister was just a mean dude that didn't like that. But the funniest scene in that movie, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, that kind of illustrates this. I don't know if you remember it. I would show it, but I'm afraid of getting copyright busted for this, even though I'd be giving commentary on it. You remember when the Burgermeister finds a yo-yo and he starts playing with the yo-yo and he's having a good time with it. And then all of a sudden, the guy that's with him, his assistant or whatever, he's like, uh, you're breaking your own rule against toys. And much like that, we have people like Gavin Newsom, who just recently got caught with all people with the heads of the medical advisors on his staff eating indoors in a crowded room. And they were so loud, it actually has the option to, you can open up the windows and it can be outside. But they were so loud that they actually had to close those. <laughs> and they were inside this tiny crowded room with a whole bunch of people, including his own medical advisors, in the midst of all this. And they were being so loud, which, by the way, would spread the droplets more, that they had to close these windows down. And this is Gavin Newsom, the person that's telling you, you can't have your grandma over for Thanksgiving because it's too dangerous. And Andrew Cuomo, who actually made this into a law, an unenforceable law, but a law nonetheless, that you can only have certain amounts of people and you shouldn't be having multi-generational dinners, that you shouldn't be having dinner with grandma, who is also having his own mother, who is 89 years old, come to a big family gathering with presumably about 10 people or more, based on the way he described it in a radio interview. And so they're just such a bunch of hypocrites. They're just like the Burgermeister. He's playing with a yo-yo. It's okay for him to do it until he realizes, wait a second, I'm breaking my own rule here. It's the same kind of thing. Look, they're doing this because they think you're too stupid to make your own decisions. But they're not. They're one of the special people. 
they're one of the people that won an election. Ooh, that must mean that they're really, really smart and really, really important. And because of that, the rules shouldn't apply to them. They're just giving rules from on high to apply to you. It doesn't apply to the people in the ivory tower, see, because they're smart enough to be able to make those decisions on their own. It kind of reminds me of that episode of King of the Hill where they enact a ban on trans fat and they... Hank and the guys wind up going underground to sell people fried foods and that kind of thing. And uh, the guy who instituted it, that made the rule, who doesn't even live in the town that they're talking about, uh, he's actually eating trans fats and he's like, well, you know, I, I have enough discretion to only enjoy them when I need to. All of you people, all of you peons out there in flyover country, you don't need the, you need those regulations to save you from yourselves. But, you know, I'm smart enough and I have the ability to indulge occasionally, but not overindulge. But you guys, you can't have them ever because you just can't control yourselves. That is how these people think. They think of the average American as an imbecile that must be nannied. They can't make their own decisions. That's how they think of themselves. They really have become like the little cartoon villains like the Burgermeister. <laughs> A recent survey showed that the average American spends, I kid you not, eight seconds reading a news story before either commenting on it or sharing it. That means that most people are barely finishing the headline before spouting out an opinion on content they didn't actually watch or read. Therefore, if you are watching this and made it to the end of this video, congratulations. You are, as Bernie Sanders would say, the 1%. So now it's totally appropriate to like and subscribe.